So don't forget that. You do uh, vigorous study on the work. You scrutinize the work. You assess your own work. In other words, you mark your work before you submit the script. That is where it go to. Now let's consider that some. Is, uh, okay. Again, can you see? No, I, I thought we were referring to the recommendation, so I wanted to alert you that the okay. sliding up here. All right, thank you. So now you can see. So we have recommendations and conclusion here. What you mean is that is it possible to translate essay type questions? I think we are referring to francophone students here who come to GTUC to study. Is it possible to translate essay type questions from English to French? I indicated here L3. The L3 here means that francophone learners or francophone students, they have French as their L2, and they may have their mother tongue. So the mother tongue or their native language, the first language, their mother tongue is referred to us as well. L1, and then French is their L2. Now, French is their L2. Now they come to an Anglophone country studying, pursuing all the courses in English, which is now the L3. They may face some difficulties, some challenges in terms of expressions, in terms of semantics, even pragmatically, they may face some difficulties, not just grammar. If you're referring to semantics, semantics is about meaning, and pragmatics is about the practical usage, okay, in context, not out of context. The use, how a particular expression or word is used, not just knowing the meaning. So, pragmatic is higher than semantics, not just syntax, okay. A lot of that we are at the level of syntax, like subject verb, subject this, but certain expressions may be different in terms of semantics and pragmatics. So we need to understand that once you have francophone learners coming to anglophone countries, pursuing their university programs in all the courses in English, definitely they will find some difficulties. So we are proposing, if it's possible, it may be expedient, it may be crucial that, for instance, like GTUC, all the essay type questions that you write, we cannot translate all the objective type uh, objective test questions or multiple choice questions. But when it comes to the essay type questions, we can decide that all the essay type questions, let's translate them for Francophone students. So that once we understand them, even in French, answering them in English will not be all that challenging or difficult for them. I've witnessed this several times. Sometimes you've been vigilating in the example. And a francophone student will draw your attention. That monsieur say, I don't understand it because the person knows that I may have some knowledge in French. I don't understand this. What does it do? But sometimes you look at it as an anglophone learner, you get to know that it's not anything difficult at all. You get to know that it's not difficult at all. But because the person has French as L2 or as second language, as understanding simple expressions or idioms in English will not be all that easy or simple for that particular francophone students. So what you mean is that difficulty francophone students face in comprehending or understanding exam questions in Ghana. We have to see how it is and then we have to help them. We must know that they really face difficulty when it comes to writing exam. We have students here who started their crash, the elementary school in Ghana or Anglophone country. Every subject or every thing that they have been doing, they have been teaching them, learning it in English. And somebody also just joined after secondary education or lycée, after lycée in the Francophone country, has come to the university in Ghana, and everything the person is doing is in English. It will not be easy for the person. So that is what you mean by the difficulties, the challenges that Francophone students face in comprehending examiner, examination questions in Anglophone countries and not just in Ghana. So we want to suggest here that Francophone students study all courses in English or in Anglophone countries. 
can equally follow this thing. It's not just for Francophone students. Francophone students study all courses in English in Anglophone countries. We have to see how to help them accordingly so that they will be able to overcome their learning difficulties or challenges in academia or in their course of study or program of study. That's what you mean. So let's learn it. The next point we have to suggest or you want to recommend that every candidate should let or every student should learn learning be his or her lifestyle. Lifestyle is what you do every day. Daily activities, daily occurrence. You don't just decide that when you're going to write exam, the day you are going to write, or a week before the exam, before you start preparing, before you start studying, start learning. That will be too late for you. Learning should be your lifestyle. Learning should be your lifestyle. Once learning is your lifestyle, you do it every day, just as you eat every day. Don't you eat every day? Don't you eat every day? No. You don't we eat every day? We do. we do. Yes. Don't you brush your teeth every day? We do. You know, you brush your teeth every day, you take your bath every day. These are daily activities that everybody does every day. So if you are also a student, a student is someone who is studious in his or her studies. So if you are a student and you are not studious or serious in your studies, then who are you? You are just a mere partaker or participant of school activities. I pray that you will not just be a mere partaker or participant of school activities, but you remain studious in your academic work, and the Lord will help you. Good. The last point, can you see this quotation here? Knowledge comes from learning. Can somebody tell us something about this knowledge comes from learning? Can somebody tell us the source of this knowledge comes from learning? Does somebody know anything about knowledge comes from learning or even the source? Can you see that I'll put it in quotation marks? I think it's GTUC Kumoto. Again? GTUC is the school motto. Very good. Clap for him. Clap for him. He has done well. Let's clap for our brother. That's GTUC. You get it. So, I love this statement so much. The motto of Ghana Technology University College is that knowledge comes from learning. It means if you don't know and you learn, you will definitely know. Are you getting it? You don't know because you don't know. That's why we have come to university to learn. So if you have come to university to learn and you don't learn, can you know? No. 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 So you need to learn one, irrespective of your background. You can be a Francophone learner or Anglophone learner, whoever you are. Once you learn, you will definitely know. So bear this in mind. And I love that motto. Okay, I love GTC motto very well. That knowledge comes from learning. This expression or this phrase is pregnant with a lot of things. Semantically, meanings, pragmatically, is very, very crucial. And nobody can deny this. That knowledge comes from learning. Once you don't know and you learn, you know. But you don't know and you don't learn. There is no way that you can. That is the point we have to take note and act accordingly. So that is the end of our discussions. If you have questions, you have uh, whatever you have, comments, you are permitted to do so. And uh, if you read this, I'm quoting from the Bible, that you should study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God. So even learning, it's like you are learning for the Lord. You need to study so that you will not, the word of God says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. You need to learn and need to study so that you will do well. You will not perish academically. You will do well academically for the help of God. So study to show yourself approved unto God and you definitely do well. No questions and comments.
questions and comments. Uh, about the perusal. Again? I said about the perusal, going through your work before you submit it. Okay, so yes. Most of the time, yeah, most of the time I personally don't do it because of the time. Because most of the time we write the exam under pressure. So okay. we, you we will hardly finish with the questions. So you don't have time to go through your work before you submit. submit. Ma, ma, so that what I would is. tell you to do is that it's true. You are right under pressure, but you have to prepare and calm yourself. Do you get it? Once you prepare, you organize, you calm yourself, you, you check. Question number one, I will spend 10 minutes. So once it's the 10 minutes is up, you stop there and you continue with the next question. You tell yourself, you have been given a stipulated time within which you should finish the work. So we don't just sit down one question. Some of you, that's what I've observed. One question, you want to write everything on that topic. Because you know that question. Because you know it. Hey, if you do that, that is what is termed as false, false balance. False balance. You are not balancing the equation. Those of you who might have done uh, maths or science, we have balancing equation or chemical equation, you know that. If yes, you do sir. that, question number one, you, you can get 10 over 10 there. Question number two, and then one. Question number three, you didn't get anything. What to be the result? You will not do well. So I would advise that you have to tell yourself, you have to apportion time, okay, to each question that you are answering. Don't decide that, Oh, I don't have time. I'm right under pressure. Then when you finish, you submit it. Once you submit it like, without reading to my brother, you may not do well. Even those of us who have been writing it down for years, sometimes you just write a letter or email. When you finish and you are not careful, don't go through. All you know, you have omitted something. Even sometimes those of us even on our lecture platform, if you type something and you don't go through again, you may think, because sometimes the mind will be working faster than even the hand. Are you following me? So the mind, once you talk to my have written, no, no, you have not written it. So you can just go back and then you correct yourself. So for final examination, my beloved students, don't make a mistake for not reading through before submitting. Once you do that, then you don't know your fate. You have not assessed yourself. The lecture can give you anything, or the teacher can give you anything, the examiner. But if you have gone through the work, you have marked yourself, all the mistakes, the errors, you have corrected them, then definitely you will do well at the end of the day. You get it. Very good. Is your question answered? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, Any sir. other questions or comments? Please, I wanted to know if it's the same lecture you'll be doing in the evening. The same. Yeah, definitely. We have to repeat. Um, yes, I think we, we have to repeat the same uh, um, presentation so that your colleagues who couldn't make it today, this morning will be able to also benefit. So we repeat the same presentation. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes. More questions, more comments. I wish everybody could ask a question. Once, once there are not many, I wish everybody could ask a question. So you couldn't come out of, you remember this point, having a list of baffling, baffling questions. You don't have any baffling question for me. You should have some baffling questions to ask. Hello, you know, it's very, very important. As I said, any study you do, you need to have a list of baffling questions. Any course that you are doing, you need to have a list of baffling questions. And then you ask either a colleague or a lecturer. Hello, sir. 
Yes, madam. So please, um, you know you teach English. Yes. So what we are learning now, is it applicable in all subjects? Definitely, it's applicable in all subjects. From, I even said, from archaeology, from archaeology to zoology. In actual fact, I teach English and French at GTUC. Okay. okay, I teach French and English at GTUC. So you can see that I wrote here, thank you, merci beaucoup, and then medasse. That is the L1, local language. So it's applicable. Any discipline, any course that you are, whatever you have discussed right now, we didn't limit it to any particular course, any particular subject. So if you go to analyze, if you go to outline, if you go to describe some of these beds, you can get, you you witness, you bear with me that they cut across any discipline, any course that you pursue in any university. You will come across them. That okay. So we need to study them. This discussion or this presentation is not just for language or linguistic courses that you'll be doing but it's for every discipline right from archaeology to zoology if you follow them it will help you to prepare very well and to do well academically is that okay thank you very thank much you. don't mention that. it good can can you hold on so that I mute all of you? Because some of you are not. No, I can't hear. Can you hold on? So it means that our brothers and sisters who are not here. Okay. Hello. I didn't get your contributions. Can you repeat? Yes, can you repeat what you've just said? Okay. I was saying that uh -huh. the information we just said is important for every student. Yes. Not just for language. Yes, definitely. Okay. Because even for you to be able to answer a question, it means that you need to first understand it. Definitely. Yeah, so the understanding, as it is said, is even part of answering a question. Yes. So once you understand it, and you under, if you understand it, you can really write. Definitely. If you study, you understand it, you can write. Yes. Good. So it's, that is relevant to all students. But well, we should not limit ourselves to maybe share or stay. Uh, it is for uh, IT students or business students or engineering students. It goes for everyone. Definitely. Is that it? Definitely, madam. Okay. That's wonderful yeah. contribution. We are very grateful, madam. <laughs> That's our director or our coordinator for the Center of Language, GTUC Language Center. Okay. And we thank her for a brilliant submission. Any other comments or questions? Is everything well understood? Uh, Sir, please can you run us through the slides again? As a recap, 
I think we have some little time. Okay, I think we have about. Maybe our questions will come from there. All right. Yeah. So just as I was saying, you know, if you are following any presentation, you don't take notes or put down points or questions. You may forget everything at the end of the day. But that, once you follow any baffling question that may crop up, then you write it, you put it down, so that you ask questions. That will help a lot, just like you studied. So we started with finding out. Before we start learning, you need to find out from your lecturers or your instructor specific areas or possible, or as much as possible about what the examination was going to be on. Once you study that, they're definitely to help you. You have to ask your lecturer. We shouldn't just hesitate. We shouldn't hesitate in asking no specific aspects that you need to know and prepare. That's the first point to consider. And then you have to know the type of questions. We have true or false, multiple choice questions, is it type question. You have to find out. Some of you don't ask questions. If you're a student, you don't ask questions. Please repent. Did you hear me? If you are a student and you are not fond of asking questions in class, please repent. Okay. Some of you don't understand, but you will not right. ask questions. If you ask questions, nobody will punish you. Okay. Nobody will punish you. So learn to ask questions. Learn to ask questions to know, okay? Then you can prepare accordingly. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. And then you have to gather all notes or slides. You have to, well, to gather all notes or a video presentation you may have missed, okay? Either from your colleagues or from your instructor, a lecturer, before the examination. That is what you considered. And then you have to get a personal timetable. Don't forget that point. Personal timetable. Set up a specific time to study an exam. And then you schedule other activities around it. If you don't plan, just as we said, you don't plan, then you are planning to fail. You plan, you will not fail. But you don't plan and then anything goes. You know you are a candidate, a student. Okay? Once you hear anything, then you move. Whatever it is, you move on. No, don't do that. You have to suspend certain activity and prepare your work or exam. And then we also discuss class work, mid-semester exam, okay, group work. You have to study them before the examination. All the quizzes, okay, including those ones who didn't do well, you have to study them. Some of you don't do well in the quiz or in a particular test, then you dump it somewhere, you hide it. Some of you just start folding it, dump it somewhere, never do that. You have to know what went wrong, and then you didn't do well, so that you uh, that mistake next time. And then you have to have a summary of the whole work that you are doing, an outline of the examinable topics. You prepare a summary, an outline of everything to be tested. Get an overview of the course. You have to come out with a summary, point by point, examinable topics. You are sure that this one may come. So that it's like you prepare. That's why I tell my you become like a pre-examiner. You are an examiner on your own. Before your lecturer becoming examiner, then the exam will be exam be you definitely do well. Then after you have you have the specific topics or examinable topics. You shouldn't forget to have detailed study of it. You have to do a detailed study of that work or that outline. You prepare a detailed study for each of them, on each of them, and then for the examination day. And then you predict probable exam questions. You said all that. And then you have a list of baffling questions. Just as I said, at the end of the presentation, you should have a list of baffling questions to ask. You, have a, a, you need to have baffling questions. 
any course that you study and you don't have any baffling question, then you are not studying that course. You, you are just going through the course, passing through, passing through the course. You are not studying it. But if you really study that particular course, you would definitely have a list of baffling questions to ask a colleague or your lecturer. That is what you say. And uh, we have to study each topic treated 10 times, even if you forget anything. And this is it's pedagogically advisable, pedagogically and andragogically advisable to study each slide or topic treated in class how many times? 10 times. Once you do that, you it will just become part and parcel of you. Is that okay? So study each topic at least three ta 10 times and that will help you. That's what you said. Okay. So you organize yourself, and then after the organization, you have some specific verbs you should understand. And then once you do that, you understand, analyze, compare, contrast, criticize, define. These are basic type questions. Okay, these are verbs. You have to understand these verbs in basic type test questions. You need to understand them. If you don't understand them, you don't know the meaning of anal analyze, compare, and contrast. Criticize, define, you may not do well. So try and go through, understand these best are very, very, very important. You need to understand them. Once you understand them, definitely you do well in your exam. Okay, discuss, describe, enumerate, evaluate, illustrate, interpret, and what have you. You need to know all that. And then Perusa, he said, don't make any mistake to submit your work without proper, rigorous scrutiny of your scripts. Don't submit your script without proper, rigorous scrutiny, analy uh, analyzing your work. You have to analyze it. You need to do proper analysis. You need to assess the script, the exam, whatever you have written before you submit. And then we have some recommendations. Okay, well, we, we, we recommend that we do recommend that it should be advisable to translate essay test, essay type questions from English to French for all Francophone students. It's very, very crucial. Once you're able to do that, a lot of Francophone learning difficulties will definitely be minimized. But if they don't understand certain expressions in English, even some of these verbs, analyze, okay. Compare and contrast. We have them in French, but they need to understand them that they are the same in English so that they'll be able to write and write very well. And then we said that learning should be your lifestyle in conclusion. So we are ending. Learning should be your lifestyle. Knowledge comes from learning. A student should not be a participant of school activities. Every student, every learner should be studious, should be serious in his or her studies. Once you do that, then you can confidently say that you are a student. If not, you are a mere partaker or participant of school activities. Thank you very much. That's the end of our presentation. Uh, sir, please, I have a question. Okay. Uh, or a contribution. With respect to uh, going to lectures for areas, there are instances where lecturers will give you areas and you will go to the examination hall. None of the areas they gave you will come during the exam. So sometimes our student is advised.